Hi there and welcome to my channel. This is Kate in the nest saying um, hi and if you're actually watching this it's I'm almost prepared to call it a miracle. I've been trying to film this all day and I just started a minute, minute ago and my whole um, camera fell off, the light fell down and Yet again, I was tempted just to give it away for the night. It's pitch dark. I've wanted to make it this afternoon and then I was going to do it before dinner while I was cooking and now we're well past dinner. But I'm not going to stop because I want to share what I'm up to because it's actually an important one. So how are you today? If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, we're finishing off the weekend. Lucky Northern Hemispheres, you've still got Sunday to go. So whatever you're doing, I hope you're well and excited about your making. This is Field Notes, the Girls Journal of Stitchery, Volume 6. And I've got a couple of stories to tell you. I have been watching and watching and watching. And I've been seeing everybody else's beautiful work. And I looked in my Edith Holden book and the one that's been chopped up um, a lot for journals. And I found this photo of Edith herself. I've never taken the time to actually look at that. So that is imprinted on my mind as I think of her. Um, and it says she was inspired to write and illustrate a diary of seasonal observations, poetry, pictures of the flora and fauna. So I think I've been looking a lot at books and perhaps missing some obvious things. I've had in my collection for quite a while now this beautiful sketchbook. I It's only now that I'm stitching that I, I see how much I've been collecting through the years. And I suppose what struck me about this was that idea that these are all little tiny squares and individual notes. So that was something that resonated with me today. I went into my stash and I came across this Annie, I did the Annie Holcomb doodle embroidery course earlier in the year where Annie gave us this beautiful tea towel that she had already divided up into squares and like individual places to work. I haven't moved on uh, much with that because even when I tried to copy Annie's amazing embroidery, it came out Kate style, but I did learn um, so much from that, from that course. So that sort of was sitting with me. And then I looked again at the piece that I've been sharing with you. And it's not that I don't like this, and I've put hours and hours of work, but I actually thought, Kate, you're just being yourself. You're not being Edith and you're not doing a field notes. You're just doing you and attaching some things to it. So I, I worked last night. I found this vintage daffodil and its partner and I tried to embroider and I didn't like that. I went and I found these tulips and put them together. So I suppose it's daffodils and tulips that speak to me and hyacinths. Um, then I put a bird and I just thought, well, some, well, many of you have been so complimentary and so encouraging. I just thought, I think this is too organic and I'm being um, held back by this Australian print. So with that I thought okay just just come down to the nest and see what else speaks to you and then I did do some journaling work I'm if you um, follow my journal series I I'm working on a set of field notes um, journals and again thank you so much to everyone who's reached out or, already and I thought look at these colors they're natural they have some colour in them, but it is, it is, even that is like a collection of loose papers. That's what a journal, a field note is. So prepare yourself before I admit and share 
my starting over. I'm wondering how you are going with your making. Are you feeling happy and confident? I suppose what I'm loving most of all is that even when we're not confident, we can watch the videos and the makings of others and learn. I did watch Corinne this morning and she shared that she was actually filming at 4 a.m. in the morning because she couldn't sleep thinking about <laughs> how she was going to resolve something. And I thought, look at it, Rachel and Sarah, you are doing the most wonderful and kind thing for all of us um, because that is what flow is all about. That's what, you know, it's like an artwork. Okay, just threaded a needle because I am going to get to the slow stitching. If my phone falls down or it tips over, I will give up, but fingers crossed. So I went into my stash then on the Sinking Naturals. And I've showed this before, and I can't remember what piece. I think it was one of my nests, because I was looking at those, my neutral nests today. And suddenly I went, da -da! look at that. That's very organic leaf shaped. And the epiphany started. So here we go. Cave has started her second accordion journal. I've put this little um, glass specimen jar up here inspired by Christine. I don't think it'll stay there but look at those. I love the idea that I might put something in there. I found this curiosity um, textile that I use a lot in my journals. I did what I said and I stamped some calico very poorly but I sort of like that it's um, field notes 2024 I've got my favorite crochet there and this could have something tucked into it and a little bit of lace it will it, it it has so much possibilities to make the journal itself I've gone back to lining it with wool and I haven't got enough pages I know it's bulky but hey if it's bulky and squishy already that means there's plenty of more opportunity so are you ready so i'm going to take you on a journey so think this as an inspiration into spring and into spring bulbs i love this you may think katie's crazy i am but it's so much fun so this is how spring bulbs is at the, mo at the moment actually I'll take these away and I don't know how far we'll get so I suppose I should flip through I've deliberately left these cross stitches on here some text types and I can easily um, carry on but neutral background which this is the journey four weeks ago I said I couldn't do neutral and now I was longing for it so where did I start? That crochet piece I turned into a baby bulb. I put some cushion stuffing in it and on this side I repeated the text so I can tuck something in there. I made a little linen hessian pocket. I've just, I hope you can see, I've just roughly and this is all about rough because I think field notes you haven't got a table, you haven't got anything major to lean on. And then that tucked into there. So that's my baby size bulb. And then I thought of the three flowers that resonate with me in springtime. And many of you ha have used these. So it was the hyacinth, which I've never been able to grow here, but I've been gifted a few and I treasure them the daffodil and the tulip. We're in the Southern Highlands, so um, the tulips are the thing that um, people come from Sydney and all over to see our tulips in spring. So I thought that was important. Daffodils I've been struggling with, and because this is authentic sharing, where's my other journal gone? As I said, I went to applique because I knew I couldn't sew them, but this one was so pale and this one ends up look, looking like a wasp so I thought you might need to 
um, go to St Printed. So uh, Corinne has been talking about these spotlight um, tea towels. So I've had this one for ages and it was only that she reminded, I thought, okay, I actually have that. So I went this afternoon, cut this one out. So I've put it on and I've see there you are you can see I've padded it I don't know that that's right this is on a <laughs> am I really going crazy I think I am maybe I should have put the little baby bulb on there that would have been more in proportion but anyway I was thinking about a series here's the bulb here's the sign hyacinth with the middle size bulb and here are the flowers and what I haven't showed you yet Here's the giant bulb. It's like a pillow. I don't know where to put that. I thought about it putting it in the front, but that would be, this has got to go all the way through. So anyway, to be continued. So to calm the excitement down, I'm gonna just sit down and do some sewing with you and talk to you about what's going through my mind. I think if, even if I focus on the bulbs, I've got to learn how to um, put some roots on them. And so I looked at Rachel's video the other day and she had woven the actual bulb itself. So, and there's nothing to stop me um, embellishing these because they do look a bit, can you see my hands? Yeah, okay. So I might attempt that with you, but I do realize I haven't got very many brown threads. And in fact, this one here is actually the only thread in these colors. That I've got. I've got crochet thread which is very fine but I think for the bulb roots we need a bit more texture. So all I'm doing is going along the bottom because it's back to original Kate where you start every slow stitch with just a bit of calming up and down Deep breathing. I mean, I did say before that it's hard to believe that this time last week I was posting a video about my final treasures that I'd found in San Diego. So how wonderful is the opportunity to travel and to bring things home but there is no place like home so I feel like I'm over my jet lag which is a good feeling and I have a big week ahead my, one of my sons is coming home unexpectedly which is very exciting and I have three door, three days at the green door. Okay, Kate being the Australian that I am, I'm now starting to think that this looks like a blue jellyfish. <laughs> so to traditional sewers out there, I wanna say I admire you so much. And I really thank you for being with me and oh gosh there's a desk creaking as well um it is so i'm learning and feeling the freedom just to today be a little out there and so i'm amongst friends And that's what I was thinking. Field notes and Edith and everything we're doing is, I think we're becoming more observant. Certainly just by looking at my flower books, I'm noticing things. I got my Fleur Woods 
um, book out this morning and just really focused on the way Fleur embroiders her flowers. So it's just symbolizes growth for all of us, doesn't it? Okay. So there we are. I've just done, you can't even see it, but it's all about the texture. So a couple of rows of um, camphor down there. I've still got thread. No, I'll stop that. Oh, look at the bucket, literally. Let's see if I can experiment with you on how to add scraggly, waggly roots. I watched Rachel, but I didn't, I can't remember what she did. I know she used loops and then cut them. So let's see if we do some of these first in loops. Just big stitches. Hmm. Let's pull them out again. She also wove across here. I think I mentioned that. And I'm not, I don't think I'll keep them all this beige colour, but I haven't got any thread at the moment. Or probably I need to go through some of my sewing basket threads and see. There we are. Let's leave those ones down there and let's put some of Judy's mustard in there as well and just see what happens. If you like, I'm the guinea pig. So this is embroidery thread and we'll add that between the four ply wool. If nothing else, if you're watching this first thing in the day, um, I just hope it makes you smile. But nature is random, isn't it? Let's make these a bit longer. Just this, as usual, Kate hasn't pulled one thread. Random poke in the crochet, one more loop. Yeah, and we'll pull it out. So I think now it's time to harvest. I think Rachel did something similar to this. As I say, I can't really remember, but I'm just going to have the fun of giving my bulb a haircut. Any loops left? One there. Actually, I think that's sort of fun. I think this one needs to be a little bit higher. So already, I actually think I'll take this safety pin out because it may be that we tell the story of the bulb giving birth to the tulip and to the daffodil and the high or maybe this could be my if you follow my journals <laughs> 
I love having secret treasure pockets. Hang on, I better just check. I love having pockets where people think, oh, what's in there? And then they pull it out. So what if this had roots on it as well? And then this one, so I have to think about my composition. But I sort of already like that that's there. We want to see this as the roots. Got a tulip that's spongy here. A little daffodil here. Really, I want to make some more daffodils, but I'm I'm wondering, as I say that, if let's have an experiment. Could I turn one of these into a tulip? And do that by, let's just have an experiment, everyone. Miss Kate, just thinking. Because that would mean that we could relate the bulb. Let's go up here. The bulb becomes the flower but they're linked because they're from the same you know what I mean the bulb turns into the flower and the tulip shape echoes the bulb so I want to add color So I, if I haven't told you already, um, today was just a slice of heaven when you can be at home freezing, not as windy today as yesterday, but just to go, okay, which thing am I going to work on first? And I did the same pattern as I did yesterday. I did, let's crochet, journal, stitch. done actually a lot of crocheting today and yeah this afternoon has ended up being not so much stitching but putting this new one together okay so this is the pink and we know that the most beautiful all tulips are beautiful but many of them come in different varieties so I'm going to finish this thread off and let's go trailblazing with my new four ply wool that Missy loves using from Little Woolies. I did look that up, so that's the name of it. So for all those stitches, is that worth seeing? I don't know. Let's pull that out. And let's try a different stitch. Oh. Why can't I find the end? So here it is here. So what else could we try? We could try like over this. I should have some plant photos out, but I'm just going to wing it. Plug that one in. Completely 
missed it. Let's try again. This, so this is truly just thinking. some more colour. I've just I've got all these little tiny scraps getting in the way. So what if we work like a heart shape here? little bits of other thread everywhere so I'll just strip that off. I can't see a lot of reward at the moment but it is fun to just go in and out and up and down. Who knows what stitch I'm doing. I'm just putting my needle <laughs> where there's holes and a bit like nature, hoping that out of this random pattern we will find some beauty. So I'm going over and over. the up and down more than the, the other directions but even if I say I want to go up and down it will probably come out different here, here comes some lovely pink oh no it's still a while away so fun when that color comes out. All right, okay, let's start to be a little bit more logical and start to meet those short stitches with long stitches. Just imagine when that hot pink comes, it's still not coming anyone, everyone. I suppose someone's trying to not do really, really long stitches, but I don't know what I've actually done other than a mess. But it is getting bulkier, which I like. Oh, look at that on the other side. That's even better. Where's my needle? It's got to be there. Just hoping when that really hot pink comes, it's in a prominent position. So I suppose on top of this, we're all thinking that there's going to be a new prompt this week. Which is also very exciting. Okay, let's start to fan out because that pink is coming. Go up here. And down 
Yeah. So if I wanted to romanticize, I could say that Kay is totally um, freeform <laughs> switching. <laughs> Truth is, I have no plan, um, but I do like that there's more color in this than when I started. I'll stay contained like in this center bit here. Uh -huh. That's good. And now let's go down to the base. Sort of put a point on it. So the pinkier is ending up down here. Hmm. So I always talk about loving these variegated threads because I don't know how to <laughs> make it work, but the thread is going to help me now. So I'm just going over and over through the bottom hole. Might be in shadow. But certainly giving it dimension. So come up here. A little bit by little bit. Yep. Look at that, that's starting to be more chilled like than that one. Oh gosh, everything's creaking because I, as I said, everything fell down and I haven't picked anything up because Okay, I've already learned so much by doing this flower. I'm going to come back down here because this is very pink about to come out. Go in there again and do a few ones over to the right. Using the same concept. first ever thread painting really <laughs> of a tulip in your kind company there we go so there we are we've got variegation I'll need to do more oh I don't like that big stitch there now you won't see that next time I'll pull it out now because it's just distracting me. That's why I never really embed everything because who knows where the where they'll end up. I'm just gonna leave them a bit hanging actually for the moment. So this tiny one is out of proportion, but maybe if I build a garden, maybe. Who knows? But I hope you're getting the idea. 
I'm slowing down because that was just so contemplative. <laughs> and that's made me giggle. There's baby Bob. Here's middle sized Bob. Tuck, tuck Hyacinth in. Here's Tulip. That will become a 3D one, I'm pretty sure. Probably join it onto there. I don't know whether. Yeah, it's probably good to have some green. Um, who knows where this one will end up. But <laughs> we're on our way. We are on our way. I'm going to put this here. Yeah, you smile. No, I'm not. I'm going to tuck it in. Um, on my second field notes journal. And in honour of the occasion, just a reminder, it's our daffodils. These are the colours I'm hanging, um, looking toward using. And here's Edith. So we're going to say thank you, Edith, for your inspiration. Thank you to all of you for helping me um, with my evolution on my field notes. A bit of mustard there. Okay, until next time. Bye for now.